Hey, this is a lecture on period and frequency in periodic motion, which includes, uh, well, periodic motion is any motion that repeats, oops, that repeats at regular intervals of time. Um, so we can, we can have periodic events that repeat over time, or we can have periodic motion, which repeats. Uh, circular motion is one example of periodic motion, as long as it's at a constant speed. Oscillatory motion, that's back and forth motion like a pendulum or a mass on a spring, is periodic. And waves can also be periodic. So we're going to define a variable period, which uses the variable capital T as the time it takes to complete one cycle of periodic motion. So for a pendulum, that would be a complete back and forth. So starting from here, coming to here, and going all the way back, that would be one period. For circular motion, a period would be the time it takes to go around one full revolution. Or for wave motion, if we have a periodic wave, it's the time it takes for one wave to pass us, one full wave to repeat. Because period measures time, the base SI unit is seconds, but we can use any units of time depending on what's relevant, um, including milliseconds, megaseconds, hours, days. So let's think about the period for the minute hand on a clock. The minute hand is the hand that points out the minutes. Um, it goes around once every hour, so the time it takes is one hour. Or we could also write it in minutes as 60 minutes. Or if we wrote that in seconds, it would be 3,600 seconds. The period for the second hand on the clock, well, the second hand takes one minute to go around, so our period is just one minute or 60 seconds. Uh, the moon orbits the Earth 12 times in one year, so if we want to find the period of the moon, we would just say, well, how much time does it take? It's going to be the time over the number of cycles, so that's one year over 12, which is in decimal, it's about 0.08 three years. We could also write that in months. One twelfth of a year is one month. About. As a complement to period, we have uh, frequency. We use the letter F, lowercase f, for frequency, the variable. Frequency is the rate at which periodic events repeat. Um, we can think of it as the number of cycles per unit time. Um, unlike period, it has a named SI unit. The unit is hertz, and one hertz is equal to one cycle per second. So let's find the frequency of the hour hand on the clock. The hour hand points at the hour, goes around once every 12 hours. So if we want to find the frequency, that's going to be once every 12 hours. If we want it, uh, if we want it in units of hertz, we need the denominator to be in seconds. So let's figure out how many seconds there are in 12 hours. Well, there's 60 times 12 minutes, so that's 1 over 720 minutes. 720 minutes is 4, 43,200 seconds. And if we actually write that in decimal, 1 over that answer is 0 0.00023 hertz. That is too small. We need to write that in scientific notation, 2.3 and then I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Actually, I'm going to write it as 23 um, micro hertz. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. So. Uh, we can find the period of the Earth moving around the sun. Well, or Sorry, the frequency. It's going to be number of cycles over time while it goes around once per year. If we wanted to write that in hertz, it would be um, once over 365.25 days, about, might actually be 26. Days to seconds, 365.25 times, well, there's 24 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds. It's going to be 1 over 315, uh, 57600. 
315, seconds. So in hertz, we just raise it to the negative one power or we take the reciprocal, one over that answer. It's gonna be 3.2 times 10 to the minus eight hertz, very low frequency. In the Daytona 500, cars race 200 laps around a track. The car finishes the race in 4.0 hours, find the frequency and period of the motion. Well, the frequency is cycles per second. It does 200 cycles, or cycles over time, in 4.0 hours. So it's just going to be 200 over 4, which is about 50 per hour. I'm not writing it in hertz because it doesn't seem relevant in this case. 50 cycles per hour. And the period is the time for each cycle, so it's going to be 4.0 hours over 200 laps. 4 over 200 is 0 0.02 hours. You might want to write that in minutes. So there's 60 minutes in an hour. It would be 1.2 minutes is our period. Frequency and period are also multiplicative inverses of each other, or they're the reciprocal of each other. We can see that because frequency is cycles per unit time, and period is time per cycle. So we can relate them by saying frequency is 1 over period, or we could also say period is 1 over the frequency. So middle C has a frequency of 261.63 hertz. Find the period of oscillation of the sound wave. Well, period is just 1 over frequency, and... So we do 1 over 1 over 261.63 hertz. 261.63. Reciprocal gives us um, 3.8222 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds or 3.822 milliseconds milliseconds um, and if we check the units uh, Hertz is the same as 1 over seconds so when we're doing 1 over Hertz it's the same as 1 over seconds to the minus 1 um, and when we're dividing by sorry a negative exponent is the same as the reciprocal of a positive exponent so that's the same as just units of seconds that's how we end up with units of time when we take the reciprocal of hertz. Period to rewrite the equation for centripetal acceleration. Uh, we know that when we are moving in uniform circular motion, our velocity is tangent to the circle of radius r, and our acceleration points towards the center. Our centripetal, or center-seeking acceleration, is equal to speed squared over r. But we also know that speed is distance over time. If we want to write this in terms of period, well, period is the time for one cycle, so we need the distance for one cycle. That's just going to be the circumference of the circle, the distance around the circle one time, 2 pi r. So if we want to plug this into our centripetal acceleration equation, we need v squared. v squared is just going to be 2 squared, pi squared, r squared over big T squared, period squared, or 4 pi squared r squared over big T squared. So uh, let's plug that in. Our centripetal acceleration is then 4 pi squared r squared over period squared divided by r. r in the numerator, r in the denominator, one of them cancels. We end up with a new formula for centripetal acceleration 4 pi squared r over period squared. So we can use this if we don't have the speed given explicitly, then we don't have to rederive the distance over time. So let's find the acceleration of the Earth due to the Sun's gravitational pull. The orbital radius of Earth is 1.50 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. So r is that, we're going to write it in meters, 1.50 times 10 to the, well there are 10 to the 3 meters in a kilometer, so times 10 to the 11 meters. Um, See, this is my sun, this is my earth. We know r. 
we, we can find the speed if we know the time it takes to go around the loop, but we're, we actually know the period of the Earth's rotation. It's 365.25 days. Let's write this in seconds. 365.25 days times 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute gives me 3.16 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Using my centripetal acceleration equation, 4 pi squared r over big T squared, I can then solve for the acceleration of the Earth towards the sun. 4 pi squared times 1.50 times 10 to the 11 meters over 3.16 times 10 to the 7 seconds, all squared. Plug that into a calculator. I get 0 0.00991 meters per second squared, or 9.91 millimeters per second squared. So the Earth is accelerating towards the sun at a very, 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 very small rate. It's about one ten thousandth the rate that we accelerate towards the Earth due to the Earth's gravitational field. In summary, period, capital T is the time for one cycle. Frequency, little f, is the cycle, number of cycles per unit time. They're inversely related. We can also then write our centripetal acceleration equation, v squared over r, as 4 pi squared r over t squared. That's all. Bye.